Hey guys, this is the first video in the series, apart from obviously the introduction, um, as Consciousness is Illusion. Um, this is going to be, I might make a few of these, it's going to be about the nature of time and consciousness. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the anthropic principle or the expansion of the universe as an explanation for time. Um, I'm going to be relating it a lot more to do with our consciousness. Now, let me first say this, because I won't go too much into issues like this, so I will just clarify. I think um, time, uh, our, our perception of time, is just a pragmatic model. It serves an evolutionary function in order for us to uh, make distinctions and, and to survive, then uh, it makes sense that we perceive uh, time flowing in one direction um, so that's all I'm going to say about that but oh first before I begin uh, I do want to thank Matt for making video responses to my previous videos I unfortunately I'm not going to be uh, arguing with Matt I want to get this series out of the way first but you didn't mischaracterize me and um, I do think if we're all in order to solve the divide between um, object and subject, we need to refer to them in the same terms. Um, and I also want to thank Rybot for looking at both of our responses, uh, both of our videos, and coming up with a response of his own. He's also got some very interesting correspondences with Matt going on at the moment, which are certainly worth checking out. So, without further ado, um, what what I am going to be talking about is. Um, time and consciousness, uh, obviously, but I'm going to be talking about uh, false memories um, first. Um, let me just give you an example uh, of, of where I'm going with this. Okay, say a person, Mr. X, um, goes to a dinner party on Monday, um, and on Wednesday he thinks that he saw a man, Mr. Y, with a bowler hat at the dinner party. Now, Mr. Y wasn't present at the dinner party, so his memory is clearly an illusion. It wasn't wasn't actually present. So there are. It seems at first that there are two possibilities that are open to us um, in terms of if we can all agree that Mr. Y wasn't there. That's an objective fact of the matter. So Mr. X has either um, had the memory implanted or revised from his original experience. If his experience was on Monday, let's say on Tuesday, uh, he, he got confused and he implanted Mr. Y into his memory. And then on Wednesday, he reports that he saw Mr. Y. Then it calls this um, Orwellian or revisionist, um, because obviously in Orwell's 1984, um, Winston was in charge of the ministry, well, he was working in the Ministry of Truth, whose job it was uh, to rewrite history, and in that way, it's revisionist, it happens after the alleged experience. Alternatively, Mr. X could have had uh, a certain bias um, on Friday, uh, and all the way through the weekend, about seeing Mr. Y there. And perhaps it was this bias that led him to experience a phony Mr. Y, a hallucination, before the event. Now, um, then it calls this Stalin-esque because of the various phony trials and uh, the the fakery of it all. Um, it, so that the Stalin-esque is a bias before the event. Orwellian is revisionist after the event. So, okay, this these terms make perfectly good sense uh, when we're talking about the macroscopic world, when we're talking about large periods of time in the brain, but when it comes down to small uh, scale uh, in the brain, now I'm not talking quantum physics, but I'm just talking quite small time periods, shorter than a second, and um, smaller regions than the whole brain, or, or or a specific part of the brain. So, I'm going to argue that neither of these uh, terms are useful 
<laughs> when it when it comes to actually talking about time and experience. Okay, so let's take for example the phi effect. Now what this is, uh, I might show video if I can find one. What this is, is two dots appear in discrete places on the screen over a period of around 200 milliseconds. Now the brain actually imposes a, a fake, an illusory motion between them. So, again, we're presented with um, two possibilities here. Either um, it's Stalin-esque or it's Orwellian revisionist. Now, if it's Orwellian revisionist, what actually happens is you first experience, consciously experience, the first dot and then consciously experience the second dot but your initial experience of the first dot is overridden by a, a conscious uh, a, a later experience which which makes it revisionist of the actual motion now if it's Stalin-esque um, it's slightly more complicated but essentially it's quite simple if it's Stalin-esque um, either you had a certain bias to see the particular motion, or there is a delay in consciousness. Um, now, if it's say if it's stolen ask and we think that there's a delay in consciousness, so we wait until we've seen both dots before we actually uh, create this motion in the brain's editing room and pass it on to consciousness. Uh, then, obviously, uh, these two, as as much as they um, seem like they're very different they're actually very much the same now the reason being there's no way to tell whether your eyes are deceiving you or whether your memory is deceiving you the reason also being um, there's there's no particular way to tell um, if the subject was conscious of the initial dot to begin with um, so essentially these are very similar the uh, person who is actually having that experience cannot tell you um, if it's Orwellian or Stalin-esque. And no matter how much uh, neurology we, we actually perform, we could agree on certain facets of the neurology. The only things that the neurologist would disagree on is which particular, say if they were being mapped while they were doing it, the only things that the neurologist would disagree on, the Orwellian and Stalin-esque, neurologist is which particular neurons were part of the conscious uh, firings and patterns and which were part of the unconscious firings and actions. However, um, both of these do lead to contradictions because at the very small scale, just as there is no center in the brain, there is no Cartesian theater where it all comes together for the pursuit of a central mina in the brain, there is no time at which consciousness happens because um, the fluctuations of particular neurons in a massive parallel circuitry cannot be said to function at one specific time. So um, consider the following explanation for the fear effect. Instead of it, consciousness happening at a particular time and having to be revised or um, a Stalin-esque uh, hallucination before. Then it proposes that what we actually um, visualize consciousness instead is not a specific person with a stopwatch. There's no stopwatch in the brain. Instead, um, it's a multiple draft. Just as the academic paper has various drafts post drafts and um, continual editing that is uh, the explanation that Dennett gives to much of these um, effects in consciousness which don't lead to inherent contradictions such as our Orwellian or Stalin-esque um, hallucinations would so that's all I'm going to say on this I will expand this multiple draft model out um, to cover other areas such as libit uh, and so on but to be honest i think it's a very useful way of thinking about consciousness and also this is one of the reasons i'm against pan experientialism so i'll hope to go into a little bit more detail later peace